So let's begin by looking at metadata itself. Metadata, um, the word meta comes from the Greek, meaning after. So literally, metadata is after data. But for us, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's usually data about other data. When we bring this into the SharePoint realm, it usually means one of two things. It's either data that's being used to describe information in lists, or most frequently, and for all of our examples today, data that's used to classify documents as they're stored in libraries. In SharePoint 2013 and in Yammer, um, the idea of metadata is also there to be able to tag information that's um, being discussed in social conversations, and we will look at that as well. But most of our guidance today is going to be around the use of classification, taxonomy, as applied to documents. So before we get too far down the road with managed metadata services, we should probably talk again about what is SharePoint. Hopefully everyone of you listening to this understands what SharePoint is, but let's set the stage with the right concepts that are out there. Now, this core architecture that I have illustrated here on the screen is, for many organizations, exactly the way SharePoint is built. The core infrastructure that SharePoint has used for a while, um, SharePoint is organized into farms, which are groups of servers that can support one or multiple so-called web applications. A web application, um, we're not going to go deeply into infrastructure, but for casual purposes, a web application you can think of as being a top-level URL. It's a group of related content that shares a common access point in the web server. So a SharePoint farm can support multiple web applications, and many organizations begin inside their primary web application with a single site collection that lives at the home page. And for most of us, what comes next is, the, is setting up a variety of subsites that correspond to departments. This is the way most intranets are originally set up. So we have a home page site collection and then a series of related sites that live in that site collection that correspond to different departments. When we're looking at how information gets stored in SharePoint, um, across each of those sites, typically we see one or multiple libraries. Libraries are the repositories that live in each site to collect the documents that users upload, download, edit, view, search for, and the like. And on each of those libraries, we can define one or multiple content types. Content types we're going to be talking about a lot um, today. Content types um, hopefully are not a brand new concept to, to all of you, but the idea of a content type is it is a grouping that relates usually to documents, um, where those documents contain some common properties, some common uses. Um, the most common content type in SharePoint is, in fact, called document. Um, we can inherit from that common content type the idea of other things. So, for example, here we have a rule that says one kind of content that I can use in the library for sales here is a presentation. And with by defining a content type, um, let's just put something on this here. Um, we may say a presentation is always going to have these three properties, a date, the client it was delivered to, and what product or products it relates to. Um, we'll see that presentations also may be used down here in the IT area. A content type, once defined, we'll make sure that all of those properties, if we define those as optional or mandatory properties, the definition, the dictionary, where I go to look those up, is always available to that content type wherever we attach it to a library. Um, we can also specify content types um, as being elements of our document information lifecycle management or document retention policies. Where we may say, for example, that present we may want to establish a rule based on the business that we're in that says all presentations should be retained permanently or all presentations need to be deleted after a year. And so those different sets of rules are aggregated into content types. 
and based on where I attach them, they become available to us. So in the example we've shown here, for example, you'll see we have policies. Policies are available in the legal library, in the HR library, and in the IT library, but not for sales because sales is not going to be tied down with any particular policy. Um, so we have a lot of flexibility with that. Content types have been around for a while. Um, let me go back to normal mode here. Um, and we'll talk about how to design around content types, but they are the container into which we frequently are defining managed content. However, if your organization has not started using them, don't be afraid. Um, content types can be added over time as you go on. One of the nice things about content types, as we're talking about this, is that content types in 2010 and 2013 can be defined and shared in one place across multiple farms. So we're not constrained to defining these content type rules at the library level or even the site, site collection or farm level, but I can set up one master repository and push out those rules for content types anywhere in my enterprise that need be. And based on the size of your organization, that's probably a fairly likely need that you're going to have. 